I've said for years, if you go to the theater in New York, if you see an actor who doesn't have a law and order credit, it means that they just got off the bus from Iowa where they really suck. <laughs> <laughs> I remember very clearly when I first met Dick, I was, I had been a staff writer, producer on Criminal Intent for a number of years. And then uh, five years into my run there, I got a call, Dick Wolf wants to meet with you, which is, to, which seems scary. You have to understand in New York, he's an icon. Basically, there'd be no theater left in New York if Law & Order hadn't stayed on the air in the 90s. There was no television at all being shot. There are many producers in LA. In New York at, at that time, there was really only Dick Wolf. And it didn't, I didn't even know that was a real person for a number of years. I just assumed it was some mythical character that employed all of my friends. You know, you hear stories. You, you, don't, you don't last as long as he has and had the success that he's had without having some sharp elbows. He likes to keep a light hand on the uh, wheel so that he lets people do what their jobs. He just wants to win, he wants to have good material, and if all this happening, then it's, uh, he's just a pleasant person to work with. The goal is always to make the best show you can. In, in 12 years, I've never been asked to dunk something down. He's, he doesn't ask you to pander to an audience, and that's, that's a relief. It's, it's uh, amazing the, the ripple effect of the work that he's brought to New York and uh, now Chicago, and how many people's lives have been uh, made whole by that. It's just amazing when you look back at the people that have been on the show. Yeah. And it's, you know, everybody from Seymour Philip Hoffman's first film role to Laura Linney to, I, I mean, there have been, I think, something like in the three shows, and this may be wrong because it was a bunch of years ago, but there have been something like 35,000 speaking parts.